Yeah. People will keep joining, I think. Yeah, yeah. You can get started. Yeah, but I thought it. No, wait, wait, wait. No, you will join. Still six twenty nine. Let Percy Master also join. No, that's why five minutes will wait. Yeah, yeah. So in the meantime, let's see because people might be having some issues also, no? like this small already. I Safraz is joining. Safraz has joined. નહીં રેનફોલ half the half the things are not working half the phones are not working yeah now 19 people have joined i think in 2 3 minutes we'll start i think like maximum 40 per start kar maximum chetan you told na chetan to join just now no, no, no i told him i told him i'll call him up so when acha he go ah yes the nazneen kothawala please unmute karna મીટિંગ Ten to seven, five to seven. Okay, so that's uh-huh. about fifteen uh, minutes from now. So uh, when uh, Temas is reading out his uh, report, this thing, uh, report. Hmm. So once he finishes the accounts, hmm. just tell him to join. But has he has he registered? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes he registered. Okay. I talked. I spoke to him today morning also. But I yeah. told him I'll call you. Okay. okay. Just said okay. I'll do that. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. I don't even know.
Lewat ini penyuk kansi itu. Is the recording no yaad rakhte yeah yeah it started yeah How many do we have? Twenty. 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 I think six forty. I start. Now. Yeah, six forty. Exact sharp. You start. Yeah, that should be good. Because then otherwise we'll keep on, you know, going behind, behind. Famous when you start, tell everyone to stay on mute only, you know, or then yes, they can keep them on mute. Because the other parts are not bad. Awaaz also. So now I'm muting all. Everyone's already muted except for three of us. Yeah, yeah. So they cannot unmute themselves, either myself or. Oh, yeah, or yes, they one of the two, or whatever. Oh, Boris is. I think I'll start now because otherwise we'll be getting late. Already we have twenty participants. Hmm? You can hear me, no? Yes. Yeah. So good evening, every ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to all the members of WJCC Pune chapter. Special welcome to all those who have joined during the current year. Also, a very warm welcome to Captain Pasi Master, Chairman of the India Region Board, WJCC Mumbai. A welcome to our great help today, Mr. Yasdi Tatra, because of whom this is possible. Thank you, Yasdi, for all your help. Uh, and welcome to once again welcome to all of you at this AGM covering the period ended September 2020. Friends, as you all know, the present situation which we through which we all are passing is very. Uh, unprecedented and to some extent even awful for the majority of us so from march 20 onwards 
till date the situation unfortunately has not come anywhere which can be called normal so this practically first time for the, in the in the our wjc pune chapter history that couple of months have just gone without any activity because a lot of restrictions that the authorities have leave it down because of the current situation so i'm sorry that uh, we could not do much during this uh, period except that a big function that we held on uh, 14th of september 2019 that was the agm uh, at arora towers a very grand gala function we had held on sorry after the agm of september 29 so september 1914 we had a, a gala function of on february 29 which was the 15th anniversary of our chapter we had a large gathering for this event in the august presence of our chief guest uh, padma shri lila punawala founder of the lila punawala foundation the function was attended by mr captain parsi master director on the international board and chairman of the indian eater board at wjcc in addition to other directors and dignitaries from mumbai and pune at this function we had felicitated leading zoroastrians from pune who had excelled in the respective fields i am honoring them with awards under four categories i will shortly explain that mr kavas pandol from the more than century old watch dealers under the trade name of city pandol and sons pune was the recipient of pune zoroastrian pune prize zoroastrian entrepreneur award the recipient of the pune prize zoroastrian professional award was the senior surgeon at ruby hall clinic dr rustam sora wadia under the category of pune prize zoroastrian social entrepreneur award it was given to ms sanaya saroj barucha who is doing tremendous work for teach for india since last many years next recipient of the pune zoroastrian youth award was ms wabiz baman barucha who has excelled in the field of sports as a captain of the national team of indian rugby team we congratulate the winners for their contributions to their respective fields and for making us all proud of their achievements at the time when we had just i had just mentioned event of 29 february we had not even thought that this will be the last major function of the year because immediately after that the month of march onwards we were facing lockdown and various restrictions to hold public functions unfortunately we were sadly deprived of our normal style of functioning and an unforeseen time of virtual meetings instead of physical ones had set in we have entered the era of webinars and video call meetings which has lost the charm of the physical interactions and meetings that's how even today's agm we are hold, having virtual let's hope and pray for an early return of normal seat on the administration front i am happy to inform that we have maintained our tradition of timely finalization and audit of our accounts for the period 31st march 2020 our working committee has also been holding its virtual meetings i take this opportunity to thank all the members of the committee our vice chair porus dada chand ji secretary farooq batena treasurer ardavira sinor and other members rohintan udachia vistas dastur camera lakdawala dinyar mehta invitees on the committee our senior member virav debu khushu minacharam ji out of these committee members two of them namely porus and rohintan have completed their two terms of two years each so in their place we have inducted new members it's my pleasure to welcome these new members on the committee they are mr yasdi batliwala mirza mutafaram and gulnar irani the new committee will be for the period 2020 to september 2022 my best wishes to all of them as you all know we have two wings of our chapter namely we women entrepreneurs and youth wing with specific tasks of promoting activities and events for ladies and youth respectively i would like to make the special mention of uh, our we members farida debu banafsha rabani and youth member dinyar mehta for their active involvement in the ladies and youth matters out of the new committee formed which i just declared both mirza then gulnar will also be part of the youth wing and gulnar of course will be part of the we wing now so this is what we have done now the new committee is already formed and we have started functioning so the question arises now what going forward what what is our road map what is our future course of action for the current year in spite of the difficulties and in spite of the difficult situations we have to at least do something so here i would like to emphasize on the role of the youth and female members 
this dire need to rekindle rekindle and rejuvenate both youth and wevs we need to provide them proper platform and motivate them to come forward to suggest and think something out of the box they have to come out with their individual ideas individual suggestions which can take the chapter forward while appreciating their views and thought process we need to guide them and mentor them so as to take best advantage by using technology and experience we need to move with the time so we have lots of potential for sure i know that but just it needs to be harnessed and directed in the right direction there has to be focus attention and approach on promoting entrepreneurship as they say our motto should be business versus nokri entrepreneurship is visible everywhere startups small companies large corporates pockets of uh, professionals etc so we have to encourage that among especially among the youth of the community having said that the next question arises is how are we going to do this we should know something some ways and means to achieve this goal because the goal is to encourage entrepreneurship and career development here let me tell you that taking lessons from the past and soliciting active involvement and participation from senior members leading businessmen and industrialists from the community and from outside we shall arrange for imparting holistic business models for which seminars lectures presentations etc will be arranged by inviting experts in the respective fields here i what i request the various committee members as well as the with you wing committee members to take active participation in that give your suggestions come up with your ideas and see that we all work together as a team and take the chapter forward with its glory and past uh, performances wherever possible we'll also try to organize on field visits to the plants and uh, operational facilities where the especially the youth and those who are looking for the career and for the uh, starting the business can get idea about how the things are moving on so the main aim is to provide career and entrepreneurial opportunities which will go a long way in building up their abilities to shine we shall also try to provide assistance by outsourcing the talents in the required areas of finance banking legal matters etc so i am really hopeful and i have full uh, confidence that we will be able to now once the situation improves once we are once the you know the restrictions are a little bit liberalized we will be able to do something more as we have been in the past holding quarterly mem members meeting which we could not hold could not have, could not hold because of the restrictions once again we will start it once we are allowed to have more physical meetings in addition to this we'll have our own, our own co working committee meetings monthly which we are having this working committee is lay down the actual course of action what we are going to do and how we are going to achieve the goals set before us so that also will be taken care of now before i conclude i would like to say that we shall try new things as i said out of the box thinking experiment new items and learn from that as they as they say failure is a learning experience failure is a learning experience failure not failure but low aim is the crime we should not get worried about the failure we should not uh, get worked up with that but we have to keep a high aim so that we can reach there and take necessary action uh, the famous quote from thomas edison well was that he was being interviewed by conducting more than 1000 ex experiments to make an electric bulb so interview i asked him after 1000 failures when are you going to give up he had failed for 1000 times so the interviewer asked him when are you going to give up edison replied i have not failed i have learned a 1000 ways an electric bulb can be cannot be made so this is how we innovate we find out things without bothering about the failure and i'm sure if we keep this in mind and if all the members actively party especially the new um, newcomers who have joined today i would like to mention some of the names who are already on the today's meeting 
we are very happy to have these new members zarin karani aros then we have uh, parvez billi moria we have farooq maneksha i think we have mehr uh, mehrza uh, mota faram gulnar irani and uh, i think i am not missing any other new member so these members have uh, joined join during the current year so i welcome them once again and request them to also participate actively and help the functioning of the chapter with their own suggestions on and on their own ideas of course senior members help will be always there so members like vira maruk barucha who have been doing very good work in the past and even present their help will be also required to carry forward and do the activities that for which our chapter is known our chapter is quite active chapter as you all know almost next to bombay chapter and uh, we have been doing lot of activities in the past which we will definitely do in the years to come also so i wish all the best to all of you and uh, thank you for your patient hearing now uh, i'll be presenting the audited accounts for the of the chapter for the year in the 31st march 2020 as you all know our accounts are audited by our ca mr shapur irani he is also our member and uh, the accounts are of course prepared with the help of our own member rohit rudachia uh, i think whether he has joined or not i don't know but he was to join he has actually gone to canada now but in spite of that also he was very eager to join so anyway If he even if he has not joined, I would want to put on record his help for maintain for preparing the accounts every year, and that is how we can prepare the we can get the accounts audited, finalized, everything fast, and submit to the WZC Mumbai chapter for a further amalgamation. So now it's my pleasure to pre present before you the income and expenditure account for the year ended thirty first March twenty twenty. uh speaking first of the income side during the year we have made a total income of 4 lakhs 88000 comprising of member subscription entrance fees sponsorship received during the year we had received sponsorship of 80000 rupees then we have contribution from members for meetings agms for the 15 year anniversary function etc etc we had also women's meet so for that also there is a contribution and of course uh, another major item of earning is the interest on bank fixed deposits so this total uh, consists of 4.88 lakhs on the in income side on the expenditure side we have spent this money uh, mainly for the various functions the agm other function that we held during the year we also sponsored one full page advertisement for synergy a magazine of our wjcc costing 25000 rupees and uh, we had to we have to as you know we have a membership of maratha chamber of commerce and industry so their subscription so is a very nominal amount around 2 3000 rupees annual subscriptions there so that we pay so total expenses are of around 3.28 lakhs leaving us a excess of income of ex over expenditure of rupees 1.60 lakhs coming to the balance sheet side a uh, major item of investment is of course the bank fixed deposits we have bank fixed deposits with rashtriya bank pune branch totaling to around uh, rupees 16.13 lakhs the interest that is accrued on the, this deposits up to now is 42000 for the year and in savings account we have balance of 1.70 lakhs with zorastian bank so that is the balance sheet side there is no other item on the balance sheet side uh, now i this accounts are put to the floor if you any information if you want to know either you can ask me or you can write on the chat there is a chat box where you can write so the later on we can take up and uh, ha huh. i will now request uh, for adoption of the account by the house so somebody will have to propose and which will be seconded by others you can raise your hand so that okay proposed by virat seconded seconding 
I can't see it. Hello. Yes, yes, the battery work. Okay, yes, the thank you. If you have any question or any information required, you can write in the chat box, as I say. So I think I have completed my part of the presentation. And now I request our senior member, Vidap Debu, to introduce our chief guest and say a few words. Can everyone hear me? Yes. OK. Uh, Chetan Shetty, who is going to be our guest speaker, will be joining us uh, very shortly. So I'll take this opportunity to just say a few things about WHCC and especially about the India board region. So all our members are up to date. Uh, once again, Captain Master, welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, we all know that these are very difficult times. Imagine having a WHCC meeting with no whining, no dining. Forget that. Nowadays, when I go, I can't even recognize my friends because they're all wearing masks. Two, three times people said hi, and I was like looking blankly at them. So these are the times, and this is supposed to be the new normal. So I suppose we have to live with it. All of us have to adapt to it, and I think we are learning very fast. I am extremely happy to see some new faces finally in the Pune chapter committee. Welcome to all of you who have just joined and really happy because youth and W wings are also serviced with these new appointments. Uh, before I introduce our guest speaker, Chetan Shetty, I'll just give you a bit of news for the WHCC India region board. Our uh, India region AGM please note, is on Thursday, 29th of October. Please make a note of it. The same way you got a link for this meet AGM, all of us will get a link for the India region AGM, which will be on Thursday, 29th October in the evening. The AGM is definitely going to be held. We are still not sure whether the elections will be held to, the, to fill up the vacancies of the outgoing directors. We are in touch with the charity commissioner and Captain Master will guide us on that maybe in a few days. Two board members are retiring this year from the India board. One is Captain Percy Master himself, and another is Adi Siganthoria. Both of them, all of you know, have been huge stalwarts of WZCC. And especially I must mention having worked with Captain Master for the last so many years on the India board, his way of working, the way he takes the entire team along with him is something which has to be experienced. And on behalf of the Pune chapter, I must place on record that we are very grateful to you, Captain Master, for your leadership. And I still hope that you'll have one more year. We extend your tenure and we don't have elections this year. But uh, in any case, all of us, from all of us, thank you very much. And we hope you'll continue to lead us from the international board as well. My term as uh, India director will also end next year. And Temas will continue, of course, as on the India board as the Pune chapter chair. So we will be represented for the next three years at least. So uh, globally and India board wise, you know that there's a jobs portal which has been opened. We are trying to, the slogan is jobs for every Zarthusti. It's very difficult, but that's one thing which we are trying to do. The youth wing is putting in a lot of effort on that regard. They are uh, collecting questionnaires, they are taking, putting out posts, getting biodata, trying to, you know, employer and employee match them up. That is one very major uh, initiative that we have taken this year. Our startup funding continues. We've already funded five or six uh, budding enterprises. The next big uh, thing is supposed to be the WZCC app, which is in the making and hopefully in a few months, it should be up and running. That will be a global app. The WhatsApp groups continue to flourish. It is now a members only group. And a lot of business has been carried out on the group with Coffee, WCC, Global Finance and other groups. One new initiative which we are trying to also do is uh, press exposure every week in Parsi Times and Jame Jamshir, we are trying to have a WCC corner. We've been discussing this in the India board and uh, it'll have some small interview with a budding entrepreneur or an 
established entrepreneur and some uh, you know things which they do what are their struggles what are the advices so we are trying to get that running that is an initiative also which hopefully should be up and coming in the next few weeks or months okay chetan have you joined so yes we just unmute chetan please yeah Yes, Vira. Hi, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Our guest speaker for the evening is Chetan Shetty. I don't know if any one of you don't know him, but uh, Chetan says I am half Baba, and I think he's half the bigger <laughs> CC also. We use him so often. <laughs> he is the Chief Operating Officer at Extensure Information Technology, which also all of us know, a Pune-based design and tech company run by Umid and Nazneen, our members. Chetan is also a very enthusiastic member of the storytellers a group who narrates stories to seed a discussion on important issues now it's not only storytelling he actually like if he is telling the story of a kafir he, he will dress up as one if he is telling the story of a magician he'll dress up as one and then tell the story it's amazing you you should really see it so today chetan is going to present a story about the greatest fiasco ever to happen at an oscar award ceremony the details of what actually happened and some ideas on how we can reduce the chances of such things happening in our day to day life and going wrong you'll say what does this have to do with wcc and business i'll tell you as owners and managers of businesses or managers in various companies where we work as professionals we know that our businesses have very complex processes in addition some of our processes are tightly coupled if something goes wrong in one division it sets off a chain of events with very little reaction time and before you know it it's you know it's galloping across so can this real life event from hollywood give us an insight in managing our businesses and professions very very interesting i'm sure you'll all love it without much ado my very very good friend from many many years chetan it's all yours good evening everyone what a pleasure it is to be with all of you once again virtually this time uh, as i heard viraj say also earlier and uh, i have so many good friends in the wzcc viraj being one of the foremost ones we've known each other i was just thinking this morning for 40 years it's in uh, longer than 40 years but for 40 years we've been the best of friends so uh, since 1980 so it's really long time uh without much ado i hope i will be able to share my screen Uh, is it possible to allow me to share my screen? I'd like to share a PowerPoint presentation with you as well. So, um, yes, the yes, the yeah. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. Just give me a minute. Some challenges here. Okay. i hope you can see the the presentation are you all seeing the presentation yes yes so what i'm going to tell you is the story of uh, a fiasco that happened at the oscars and uh, to give credit where it's due i've got most of the story from from a guy called tim harford and he's a journalist in the united uh, in the uk and uh, so from one of his stories i picked up most of the material that i will be telling you about uh, right now um so the occasion is the oscars now for all of us i'm sure uh, at least our relationship with hollywood this is a really big night i mean i know that i've stayed awake to watch this uh, for ever so long ever since they've been showing it live on television and this was the february of 2017 giving away the oscars for 2016 the biggest night in hollywood 33 million people watching it on television and there being a host of the who's who of hollywood in that auditorium and we are down to the last award of the day uh, which is the best picture right and to give away the best picture they call on warren beatty and faye dunway now warren beatty and faye dunway are being called up because exactly 50 years ago in 1967 bonnie and clyde won the best picture and these actors were the lead pair in bonnie and clyde when bonnie and clyde was being was uh, was in contention so to honor them uh, they were called there uh, to give, give away the award now as you can expect 
if they won the best picture prize 50 years before this date they are also pretty much getting on in their years okay so they are there they are out to announce the last award of the night uh, best picture and uh, you know uh, warren Beatty opens the envelope he looks inside and then he pulls out the card and he says then the award goes to and then he stops to look inside the envelope again and looks to the left and looks to the right and the whole audience bursts out into laughter thinking Ye bhao bada ra. you know he's just cowing footage he's just sort of you know trying to build up the tension and you can see Faye Dunway standing there with her hands clasped like that you know thinking Abhi, kya hone wala hai? tell us tell us you know and finally she sort of hits Warren on his hand and says uh, come on Warren you're impossible and uh, finally Warren shows Faye Dunway the envelope and Faye Dunway immediately announces that the winner is La La Land. And there's a huge cheer and the entire team of La La Land comes on stage and, you know, they start giving a speech and this and that and everything is going on. And, you know, in, in, when you announce the best picture, it's not only the producer, but the entire cast, whoever's in the auditorium associated with the movie comes up to share in the limelight. After all, it's a team effort when you win a best picture. And therefore, everybody is on stage and everybody is on stage. But you can see that there is some, some confusion going on there. You know, this bald gentleman in the middle, uh, if you can see where my cursor is, is the guy who's, who's giving his acceptance speech. He's the producer of the movie. And, uh, but there are some worried faces. There are this couple standing at the back, the lady in the prominent red dress and a man next to him. And Warren Beatty is showing this producer something on, his, on the slip. And then finally, the producer comes back to the mic and announces and says, there's been a mistake. La La Land didn't win the award. The award goes to Moonlight. And crew of Moonlight are watching, stunned. Is this really a joke? Is, I mean, is this a joke or is this real? And he says, no, I'm serious. Come on, come on, come along. You know, it's, it's, you won the prize. And he tells his whole crew, come on, we got to get off stage. And everybody leaves the stage and goes away. And Moonlight comes and accepts the prize. And all this happened in front of a live television audience around the world. Many of you included, probably. I was watching this. And so many of the who's who of, of Hollywood sitting there, how could they have let this happen? And what happened, right? Who is to blame? We must find who is to blame and hang them, right? This is something that can happen even in your business. And you need to think about this, that how do we prevent this? And who is to blame? Who made a mistake here? Now, if you analyze the problem, it so turns out that if you really look at this blown up photograph, I've you know, written it down for you at the bottom. Uh, it was... The envelope read actress in a leading role. Warren Beatty had been given the wrong envelope. Right? And what he saw inside the envelope was this card which said, Emma Stone, La La Land. Now, naturally, Warren Beatty got confused and said, Ye kya ho hai, bhai? What is this card? And, you know, why am I being given this card? And something wrong here and which is why he was looking sheepish and he looked left and he looked right and you know he was sort of looking in the envelope that maybe there's a second card inside so he was sort of being a little sheepish about it and uh, you know this is the whole point that he was being sheepish but yet you know like in that Aaj ki Adalat kind of a thing like you know I accuse people I accuse Warren Beatty of being guilty of knowing that something was wrong but he did nothing he was too embarrassed to say, oh, let me walk off stage and find out from the organizers what's wrong. And it was too humiliating for him to do that. But look what he ended up doing. He ended up causing a lot more humiliation to everybody. So I accuse him that he, despite realizing that something was wrong, he didn't do the right thing. And probably because he was scared and he was humiliated. And, you know, he, he just thought he wanted to avoid humiliation. And the fact is that you and I and everybody in the world will rather die than be humiliated. One of my favorite movies of all times is a movie called The Reader with Kate Winslet in it, if you remember. And that whole movie is about the extent that people will go to avoid being humiliated. 
to avoid being embarrassed. You know, humiliated is probably too strong a word, but even to avoid being embarrassed. And this was really the problem. And this is what I accuse Warren Beatty of. But who are the other suspects? What about Faye Dunway? I accuse Faye Dunway of acting without thinking. Yes, the pressure of the audience was building upon her. Everybody was, you know, waiting for the award and she was standing there and she thought she had to rescue the situation. So she just blurted out the name La La Land. But I accuse her of not thinking. That she should have thought that why is Emma Stone's name on that card? Something is wrong. But she just blurted it out. And finally, the third person that I can accuse in this is this gentleman who we haven't yet introduced. His name is Brian Cullinan, and he works for Price, or at least he used to work for Price Waterhouse, Price Waterhouse Coopers. They are the auditors in charge of the entire award ceremony, and they carry the awards to the ceremony. They have these envelopes, and they hand out the envelopes to the presenters. So technically, they and a small group of people are the only people in the world who know the answers, who know who is winning, who is winning. And minutes before he handed over this envelope, the wrong envelope to Warren Beatty, he was standing in the wings and Emma Stone had just won the Best Actress Award. And she was there, you know, coyly being modest about the fact that she won the award. And he was probably so excited about being so close to Emma Stone, he pulled out his phone and he shot a photograph of her and he tweeted it and posted there, Best Actress Emma Stone backstage. Hashtag PWC, right? And therefore, he probably got distracted and gave Warren Beatty the wrong envelope. So yes, a lot of lessons in this. Get off the phone. Get off the phone when you're driving. Get off the phone when you're with family. And get off the phone when you're backstage handing out envelopes of the best picture. So I accuse Warren Beatty of being distracted and not doing his job. And so... I'll just pause and ask you this question. Who do you think is to blame? If you would like, you can put on your mic and volunteer an answer. And just tell me, who do you think is to blame? Oh, I, maybe you're not allowed to put on your mics. This has to be done by the host. So anyway, think about it yourself. Who would you blame? I'm giving you three suspects. Warren Beatty, uh, Faye Dunway, Brian Cullinan. Okay, who of these three are to blame? Those who want to speak can raise your hand so that I can unmute them. Hello? Yeah. If anyone would like to. The Price Just... Waterhouse Cooper guy. Sorry? The Price, Price Waterhouse Water Cooper guy. Okay. He's the one to blame. All right. Let's just move on. Okay. Yeah, so let me just, before I come to this, let me just close the question about who's to blame. See, we'll always find someone to blame. We'll always find someone to hang. And I'm saying this to be true in your business and mine as well, right? If we do a post-mortem of a project, we do a post-mortem of something that goes wrong, we will always find someone to hang and we can, you know, cut his salary, we can fire him, we can file a case on him if it's very serious, whatever it is, you know, and we can humiliate him because people are so scared of being humiliated. So we can do all these kind of things. We can just harass them and yell at them so much that they won't sleep for a couple of nights. But the point is, I think you and I as managers need to think about, as owners of our businesses and managers, we need to think about how can we build systems that prevent these mistakes from even happening, or at least reduce the probability. You know, humans are bound to make mistakes. Humans, it is human to err. So how can systems be designed that, it, that despite human beings, despite the frailty, despite the wandering chanchal man, as we say, of the, of the human beings, despite that chanchal man, how can we ensure that there are enough checks and balances in the system works, right? So we have to make some attempt. And therefore, this is what we're going to talk about now. If you look at the card that was given out, okay, the card says the Oscars at the top, very, very prominently. And why is that? Because if it didn't say the Oscars on the top, Warren Beatty might have thought, oh, I'm at the AGM of WZCC giving out the award for the best entrepreneur. Of course not. Everybody knows there are the 
50 Oscars, all the 50 cards in, in Brian McClellan's hand, uh, Brian Cullinan's hand, all of them had the Oscars about it. This wasn't really, the important thing was not to say the Oscars. The important thing to say was who won the prize. The next thing you'll note is that Emma Stone and La La Land are in the same font size. Now, even for the, in the case of this award, which was being given to Emma Stone, shouldn't Emma Stone have been big and La La Land have been small so that, you know, people could have actually seen or realized, you know, that what is going on, that who is the, uh, who is the guy who should really have, uh, who should have been given the award and what was the award for, there should have been a difference in that. And finally, Best Actress, which is probably the important category, because this is what differentiates this card from the 50 other cards that are there in, the, in that briefcase, is what was more important, and that's given as a little footnote at the bottom. Yeah? So therefore, this was really what was the bad thing about, about the card. And therefore, you need to think about these things. You need to think about how information is being communicated. And this would probably have been a better card. I hope that my speech is keeping up with my slides and I have no way of knowing if it is. But this is a suggestion of how the card should have looked. Best actress should have been on the top because this was the category. This was an important thing. Emma Stone should have been in bold. La La Land should have been a little smaller. And the Oscars could have been relegated to an icon. To just like a little token over there. Had the information been presented in this manner, had this information been designed correctly, I feel Warren Beatty would have had a greater conviction to say, hey man, you've given me the wrong card. Excuse me, you would have made some joke, you would have walked out, you would have got the new card and come back. But because this information was not presented in this manner, he had some hesitation and said, I don't know, am I making a mistake? Where are my glasses? After all, I'm 80 years old. Am I having a senior moment? Am I seeing something wrong? He must have had all these thoughts in his mind. But had the card been read like this, he would probably have had no doubt in his mind. And so forget about Oscars and forget about Warren Beatty. I ask you, are we presenting our information correctly? Do we write our reports in a manner? Do we make our presentations in a manner where the subject becomes clear? One of the things I intrigue people with is that especially when we write emails, we're now writing less and less of it because we're switching to WhatsApp. But I'm saying when we write emails, please give 30 seconds to think about what should be the subject of your email. Because that is the first thing that people see in their inbox and then decide when, how to, when to read your message. They decide or they set the context before they even start reading your message. It's very important that you write a good subject to your email. And then when you get into the email, now I am a storyteller. And I like to tell stories. And in the story, you've got to build up a climax and then tell the punchline at the end. But in business communication, I would advise you to do the opposite. In the first two, three lines, state what action is required. And then spend the rest of the message in trying to communicate why you, have, why you are requesting that action. Okay? So I need a concurrence on this decision and I suggest this. Now, these are the reasons why I suggest it. Rather than saying, you know, this happened, then Raju went to the market, then the bananas were bad, and therefore this happened. Therefore, I suggest we should recook lunch all over again. No, not that. The mail should start with, let's recook lunch again. I'm taking a stupid example, but I'm saying, let's start with that and then suggest why everything had to happen. I think presenting information, presenting dashboards, presenting reports, this is so critical that you think about what is the message we want to convey? Is that message coming across clearly? And that is the key thing. This needs thought. It needs to be designed properly. And this is something that we focus on and we should be focusing on much more than we do. Now, before I go ahead, sorry, where am I running ahead with this presentation? Sorry about that. Okay, before I go ahead, some question may have come to your mind. How come there was this envelope of actress, best actress that was given to Warren Beatty? Because we already saw that Emma Stone had already got the award a little while ago, right? So if Emma Stone had got the award a little while ago, then that envelope should not have been with Brian Cullinan. 
So how come it happened? This is the photograph of Leonardo DiCaprio presenting Emma Stone the award just before the last award was announced. So how did that envelope happen to be with Brian Cullinan? It should have been with, with Emma Stone by now. And therefore, this is the secret. The secret is that Pricewaterhouse doesn't send one auditor to the program. It sends two. The other lady who was in red, and she's appeared in one of our photographs before, is Martha Ruiz. And she was the other PricewaterhouseCoopers person present there. I, to avoid all kinds of accidents, PricewaterhouseCoopers sends two people to the awards, both carrying identical briefcases with the exact, with the total number of the set of awards. Each one of them carries 50 envelopes. And they come in different cars so that if a road is blocked somewhere, the other person at least reaches. And they stand on opposite wings of the stage. And in turn, they hand out envelopes to the presenters as they come up. Come up. And when someone presents an envelope, for example, Martha Ruiz might have presented Leonardo DiCaprio with the best actress. At that time, Brian Cullinan is supposed to set his card of best actress aside and then take the next envelope and give it to the next presenter who was Warren Beatty. Now, Brian Cullen was so busy taking photographs of Emma Stone, he forgot to set that envelope aside and he gave that same envelope to Warren Beatty. And therefore, there were two envelopes that had for best actress. Martha Ruiz gave one to Leonardo DiCaprio, which was correct. And then Brian Cullinan gave one incorrectly to Warren Beatty. So this was a problem. The problem was that something that was set up as a, as a fail-proof mechanism actually caused the problem. There was a fail-proof mechanism that there should be two sets of envelopes if something goes wrong. But that's what caused the problem. And therefore, we need to think about how, many, how much solution, how much fail-proof we put into it. And this is what Pricewaterhouse had to say the next day after the announce, after the awards were done and the whole fiasco happened. They said, henceforth, a third PwC partner will be present in the control in the show's control room. I'm sorry, I've been calling them auditors. They're actually partners at PwC. This is the third, a third PwC partner will be present in the show's control room with a stack of envelopes ready to alert the producers to an error. But it just seems to me that two sets of envelopes caused a problem. And these guys are fixing the problem by sending in a third set of envelopes. What it seems to me is that not enough thought is being given to finding solutions. And this is my inference for fellow business people. That let's not be too quick to find a solution. Let's live with the problem. Does it really need an immediate solution? Let's just live with the problem. Let's walk in the shoes of the people who are actually using the system. Let's empathize with what they are doing. Many problems in life and many problems in business are what we call wicked problems. They're not problems that have a straightforward, straightforward analytical solution. It's quite amazing that in this day of smartphones, etc., that we are not doing something digital that will not create a problem and we're creating these two copies of paper that are going around. Could we have thought about this? Maybe that's not the best solution. I don't know what the best solution is, but the best solution requires that you work on it. You talk to the people, you talk to the presenters, you talk to the partners and you try to figure out, don't do one marampati like this and say, oh, 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 these two guys caused a problem. Now we'll send a third guy and eventually they will have to send 30 people to make sure that everything is solved. So this is also, you know, a bit of a problem. And therefore, putting all these lessons together, I feel the important thing is that, A, we have to have empathy. We have to live the problem if we're going to try and find a solution. Let's not do this marampati. Two is that we need to design how information is presented. Yeah, this is an extremely important thing. And a third and a very important thing is that we must simplify things in our businesses. Many things in our businesses are tightly coupled. That means things happen quickly one after the other. There's no time to react. Just like a live television show, there is no time to react. Now, if we know that it's tightly coupled, then let's simplify. Let's not complicate. Yeah? And sometimes just simplifying design is the best design. So these are the things that you and I need to think about. And just to 
you know, think about, hey, so what's the big deal? Why are you talking to us about all these things when it happened on an Oscar program, on a television? None of us are on television. And, you know, what's the worst thing that happened here? Nobody died. It just embarrassed an 80 year old actor and they called them back the next year. You know, they invited Warren Beatty and Faye Dunway to give away the best picture prize again in 2018 just because they wanted to make up for, you know, just to say that, hey, we're not upset with you, you know, that this is not your fault. So we just, you know, went ahead. So let's just think about some other situation. This picture that you're seeing on screen is the control center of a nuclear power station in New York at the Three Mile Island. At least it was like this 20 years ago when they had an accident. And when they had an accident, 20 different lights went off in that control room. 20 alarms went off. Sometimes a red light indicated that a motor is on. Sometimes a red light indicated that something was wrong. Sometimes the switch to control that motor or that valve was close to the red light. Sometimes the switch was far away from that red light. This is such a great example of a lot of information and no data. I mean, a lot of data and no information. You're just vomiting out a lot of data. It's all available. You can say, oh, yes, the control room, the man can see everything. The, the operator can see everything. But what is he to do with all this information? How is it going to guide him of what to do when an accident happens? Now, nobody died in this accident, but it was quite serious. But this is just an example of how when we create reports, how we create dashboards, we need to think about this because people's lives are at risk. There should be some consistency. There should be simplification. There should be a flow of action that guides the operator and what is to be done. And then I have another story for you where this thing, where things went wrong is the, the last crisis that we are having before this a coronavirus pandemic that we're having currently was the financial crisis of 2008. As you all know in that story, many companies, financial institutions invested in these, uh, in these bonds that were just bad loans for housing properties. And Lehman Brothers, which had many millions of small-time investors and in it was going to go bust. And the head of the Federal Reserve, who's the equivalent of the chairman of the, or the governor of the Reserve Bank in India, was trying his best to bail out Lehman Brothers because he didn't want millions of Americans to lose their savings. And while he was in the middle of all those calls, the chairman of AIG was sitting in his, in his reception waiting for him outside. And, you know, he wanted to meet with the, the, with the head of the Federal Reserve, but the head of the Federal Reserve didn't have time with him. Now, chairman of AIG is a very big man, right? AIG is a worldwide insurance company. But even then, the... the head of the Federal Reserve didn't have time because he was very busy and his, his secretary kept apologizing and saying, you know, please uh, just uh, bear with us. You know, it's Lehman Brothers. You know, everyone is supposed to understand that Lehman Brothers was such a big problem. And finally, late on Friday evening, he saw the guy, the chairman came in and the chairman gave him a report and said, you know, I think you should uh, give some money to AIG as well. You should bail us out as well because, you know, it can help. And he said, oh, you know, I've got so many problems. Lehman brother is so serious. And the chairman of AIG was probably a little too embarrassed to say, you know, the real truth. So he sort of said, you know, you should think about it. And, you know, wanted to guard his own ego and his own image a little bit. So he didn't want to plead too much. And he gave him a 27-page report uh, to read. And he said, yeah, yeah, I'll read it. And he kept it on his table. Over the weekend, the Federal Reserve, you know, the equivalent of the Reserve Bank was working away about how to bail out Lehman Brothers. And while they were doing all this calculation, on Sunday evening, somebody came up and rang up the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve and said, hey man, the bigger problem is with AIG because AIG is an insurance company and AIG has insured all these financial institutions for these CDS swaps, the CDS swaps that they have created. And if AIG fails, then all these financial institutions will fail. Because just like how Martha Ruiz and Brian Cullen were the safety mechanism for each other, the insurance was the safety mechanism for uh, these financial institutions. And therefore, on Sunday evening, they realized, oh my God, we've got to save AIG. And then they looked at the report. And on the 15th page of the report, it was written that AIG needs $2.7 trillion to pay up all their insurance debts. $2.7 trillion with a T. Right? 
and that was tucked away at the bottom of the report somewhere. So the same parallels apply. Information was not presented correctly. Too much humiliation and embarrassment to say, hey man, we really messed up. You need to bail us out. Okay. And therefore, a lot of good time was wasted. So therefore, with this, I'll end my presentation. If there are some questions, you know, I, I know some of you have been pinging on the chat, but it was, you know, it was very difficult for me to concentrate on the chat as well as, as well as speak. So I'm now free to look at the chat. So if you'd like to chat or if you'd like to ask questions, we have a few minutes, I guess uh, it's 7.30 right now. So uh, we can probably with uh, the Raf and Tema's uh, permission, probably if there are questions, we can, we can talk about it. The thing that you need to ask yourself is, are there lessons in this that apply to me? Because uh, you know, we all run businesses, we're all uh, responsible for payroll at the end of the day, we have a business and a profitability to be responsible for. And more important, we have to make sure our businesses don't go belly up. And these are you know, kind of stories that can make a business go belly up and we need to be worried about. I'll stop here and leave the floor open to you if you have any comments or questions about it. So Chetan, it was really very interesting. <clears throat> sorry. And you very nicely covered the whole incident, two incidents with, sorry. Very nicely covered the incident with the management, with the business, how do businesses take place and how difficulties and what precautions are taken. You nicely correlated the whole issue, I think. Communication is the key. And proper information, supply of proper com communication is key in any, any field. So you very nicely related the whole issue of the Oxford as well as the Wall Street Journal matter also to business. So it was a very nice talk. I hope everybody must have enjoyed, definitely enjoyed. So we have some time, friends. We can, I mean, if you want to have further discussion or any information from Chetan, you are free to ask. Raise your hands, we'll unmute you. I'm glad that people have asked questions in between. Sarfaraz was there, Yasdi Bhatliwala asked, Vistas, Vistas replied. So many people also responded during your speech. Yes. Yeah, so. <clears throat> they have given answer on the chat, Sitripan. Yes. So, for those who are watching Zareen, the chat. Zareen, Arani, are Zareen wants to speak. Yeah, one minute. You mentioned about somebody else's embarrassing uh, incident. Why don't you tell us very quickly of your most embarrassing professional experience? Oh, you've caught me now. Let me think about this. Well, there have been many, I'm quite sure. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just saying even more recently, I, I always feel embarrassed when I have uh, technical issues because I work for an IT company and yet with all this Zoom, etc., we're all working from home and doing it ourselves. So I have to keep saying, uh, you know, uh, I was not well and there was something like this because I feel, I feel too embarrassed to say that, yeah, you know, even guys who work at IT companies sometimes <laughs> have, uh, have technical problems. Uh, there have been some major embarrassing issues which I'm too embarrassed to even share with you right now. So, <laughs> public right now, so. Sorry for the question. <laughs> no, but a good question. And very nicely handled by you, Chetan. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes questions don't occur to you right now. But, you know, as you think over this, if something should come to you in the future as well, uh, you probably know how to find me. I'm at chetan.chetty at extensia.com. I would love to hear from you. I mean, I don't have answers to everything, but you know, like, uh, like Viraf said in my introduction, we do this thing to seed a discussion, you know, and therefore uh, I would love to hear your reactions as to what you thought about this. If you disagreed with something more, you're more than welcome to disagree and let me know that, you know, you don't think that what I said was correct uh, perfectly. And I think we would, we would appreciate that. So I'd like to end by, you know, Thanking all of you once again. Uh, it's been such a privilege uh, to be associated with the WZCC, and I'm, uh, I thank you for inviting me and honoring me with this invitation. 
It was a thank pleasure. Very much, Chetan. Thank you. It was a pleasure to have you, and thank you once again. Of course, there will be formal vote of thanks, but uh, your talk was really interesting, and I'm sure everybody must have enjoyed it. The question that we are looking for, or maybe later on, it will be start shooting at you. I say, I think. So let let them let them have some time for that. Okay, friends. So since now we have some time, I will uh, keep the forum open for any members. If you want to speak, any new members or existing members, we want to say a few words. We have since we have some time. I mean, I can give the opportunity to anyone who wants to say something about himself, about the business, about the Bruce SCC, what he would like to do, how he would like to contribute, how he would like to help. So, I mean, leave it open for anyone. Please raise your hand so that we can unmute you. Anyone? Ah, okay, with us. Uh, Temas, why not let the new members uh, just be? Why don't you let the new members come onto the screen and uh, introduce themselves? The, the old members like me are okay, but for us uh, and not for us, Apra, Yesdi and the other new members who have come in, Yesdi Kulnar, just let them come onto the screen and introduce themselves and uh, just uh, say something short as to what they are doing. Exactly, that's what I'm telling the new members, please. <clears throat> Yeah, Parvizan, madam. Yes, why don't you start? Yes, please. Yes, Parvizan, I'm unmuted. Yeah, good evening to all. It was a wonderful thing, Chetan. Wonderful, uh, wonderful experience that we've had with your talk. I don't know whether Chetan is still there or he's left. I'm here. Thank you so much. He's there, he's there. Chetan, uh, just to brief you up, I am from the Pune Blind Men's Association and your organization helps us a lot. Uh, and it's a great pleasure to know that uh, Accenture helps us a lot, uh, a lot by way of a CSR project. Uh, that is one part of the story. I'd like to tell all of you uh, that I've come here with a motive. The motive, what is my motive? My motive is to see the Zoroastrians Whoever has any eye problems can be treated in my hospital. The hospital's name is PBMA's HV Desa Eye Hospital. As of now, we treat more than 40,000 patients every year. Off, off late, in all in the last 20 years, in the last two decades, we have treated around 6 lakh patients, operated 6 lakh patients, of which 65% uh, are free of cost. So any Zoroastrian who wants any help from our side, please be rest assured. Uh, Timas knows me very well. We can connect and we can be a great help to society and especially to our Zoroastrian friends. That's all. Thank you, Parvez. Okay. I'm sure people will get in touch with you. <clears throat> yes, they? Take me, take me. You're unmuted, is he? Yeah, I am. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. Temas, Virat, thank you very much for adopting me and uh, making me join the committee. I will definitely be doing my best. I can assure you of that. Uh, coming to Chetan, I think Chetan was a very eye-opening talk that you gave. I have heard you with your storytelling skills very often in our Rotary Club. And uh, this is the first time I've seen this new side of Chetan Shetty, who nearly gets our gray matter working. And uh, thank you very much for what has been a very interesting evening. Thank you, friends. Hope to see more of you as time goes by. Thank you. Thank you, SD, and welcome to the committee. Okay. Gulnar, you would like to say something, Gulnar? Hi, can Gulnar. you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hi, this is Gulnar Irani. My husband is Jangir, and uh, we are into catering business. We cater all cuisines for all occasions. I'm glad that I'm a member of this group, and uh, definitely I'll put in my efforts to, to the best and uh, 
help all the zoroastrians grow and uh, especially uh, chetan sir's uh, presentation was really very nice and uh, the topics that he covered actually uh, it is something that will really help in day to day life to everybody thank you so much thank you good luck and we look forward to your active participation in the activities all Definitely. the best all the best linia mehta you would like to come forward i think mehzad is there or not mehzad mehzad he he was there can't see him now maybe not say not see linia linia is there he is also gone no linia is there i think linia are you there hello ha ah, linia and uh, mehzad actually has connectivity issues so he is uh, dropped out Achha. So you said something from youth angle, Dinia. Uh, from the from the youth angle, uh, since Mehzad and I are both uh, from the uh, both of us have an IT background, we decided to set up a couple of programs, starting with uh, setting up your Shopify store, or uh, basic things like setting up a basic WordPress website, and of course also giving people uh, sessions on how to promote themselves. Basically, things like Facebook marketing using LinkedIn, because this is this is a major need of the art. since everybody is at home and the way we see uh, the development of with regards to the vaccine coming out it would seem at least after, probably are most likely after the first quarters when they would come out with the results therefore it would it would be more prudent to actually uh, train people and teach people how to use linkedin like how to get your profile up how to optimize your profile how do you use uh, linkedin sales navigator so these are certain uh, areas that we are looking at Mehzad also is uh, is a is a trainer is a cyber security trainer, and we'll also be co covering a couple of programs for that angle as well because there are a lot of uh, security issues that a lot of us have been facing in the recent times. So I mean, this is the basic program that we've thought of from our side at least for the next quarter, and yeah, we'll keep you updated. So thank you, Dinia. You finished, Nia. You finished. Yes, I did. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, friends, as you know, Dinia has been with us last last since now two years, and he has been of great help to us. And I am sure he will further contribute to all of us, especially though for those of us who are not very tech savvy. He is of great help to us, and look forward, Dinia, to you also to take it forward, and especially make the youth wing very active. Now that Gulnar is there, uh, Marzad is there, and other existing members also, you take them around, and you know. Just uh, revive, revive the youth wing also. Definitely, sir. Thank you. Darin wants to say something again. Okay? Darin. One minute. You are Darin. Are you unmuted? I, I apologize for speaking so much. No, no, but... you are welcome. <laughs> thank you uh, i really want to thank chetan it's always a pleasure to hear you and learn from you but i wanted to say that i have i joined wcc here almost a year ago and next week we are going back to boston and so i want to thank each and every one of you i really felt we had a support group here with viraf and temas and all of you and whenever i've put anything on the whatsapp the amount of goodwill and help that people have offered i think you all have a great great group going here it's so supportive and when i see all these jobs being put up as well i and the whole entrepreneurship inspiration i think pune chapter is one of the very active and great chapters i would love to continue to be a member from the boston area because right now we don't have a chapter in boston so if i may stay on the whatsapp group and continue i would very much like to continue the membership here because pune is my hometown so i just want to thank you all and wish you the very best and also offer very genuinely 
if there's anything that I can do from that end, anyone wants to find out anything in America, I would be very glad to put people in touch with the right people there as needed. Thank you. Thank you, Zareen. Thank you very much. I knew very desperately you wanted to go to US before to meet your extended family there. So now that it is coming true, wish you all the best. Wish you and your husband a very safe journey back to America. And of course, we'll miss you, but that you can continue guiding us, helping us as Puna chapter member. You are a Punaite, basically. And I was glad to have you as a member and thought we'll have continued long relations, but you are going anyway. That's all. All the best to you and thank you. She'll thank be a brand you. ambassador in USA. Yeah, keep in touch, Zarin. Keep in touch. Thank you, certainly. I think Farooq Maniksha is also there. He's also a new member. Farooq, you'd like to come in? Is Farooq Maniksha there? Oh, uh, yes. Farooq? Hi. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not that familiar with Zoom, so... No, 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 no problem. You are unmuted. You can say something about you, about the your business, if you want to say. Uh, yes, I'm in Goa and I look forward to meeting all of you. Either here or when I can come to Pune later. Your video is not on. Uh, just ah, video, is, video is not on. Anna, anna, anna. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, Farooq. Uh, yes, I, I'm really happy to be a part of this. Uh, and uh, I'd like to meet you all when I come to Pune. Yes, it's yes. nice that we're meeting virtually. Uh, let's meet at a better time too. And uh, if any of you come to Goa, you're most welcome here. Thank you, Farooq. We look forward to meet you. You are also basically Punaite, I know, as I know you. Yes. We look forward to meet you at the earliest, either in Pune or in Goa, wherever it's possible. <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you for being part of us. Thank you all. Pleasure. Anyone else would like to come in? Oshidar, you want to speak something? Oshidar? Oshidar, Natasha, anyone from youth? Natasha, are you there? No, she's left, I think. She's left. Oshidar? Where is Oshidar? No, he's not here. He's not here. He's also not there. Okay. So, Rohinton, thank you. Seeing you here, you are there. Finally, you have joined Rohinton. I think you will not be able to hear, it looks like. Anyway, so, I think we are quite on time now. Uh, if no one is there or no one is going to speak, I will request Farooq Bhattin, our secretary, to propose a vote of thanks. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tebas. Uh, I have the very pleasant task of proposing the vote of thanks for today's meeting. An unusual meeting by any standards. Uh, I think uh, having an AGM like this virtually is something totally new. But as Viraf mentioned, this is the new normal and we all need to get uh, used to it. And I guess we are all uh, coping quite well. Uh, so let me first of all start by thanking Chetan. Chetan, your talk was amazing. The, it was really an eye-opening uh, talk. The way you spoke to us about the, the fiasco that happened at the Oscars and how you drew an analogy with what happens in, in the corporate world and in business. I completely agree with what you say because I also am from a corporate world and these kind of things happen more often than uh, most people know. And uh, so some of the points which you raised uh, on the, the what needs to be done to avoid these kind of uh, uh, issues from happening were really very apt and uh, need to be implemented by all of us. Uh, so thanks once again, Chetan, for being with us here and enlightening us with your very good uh, presentation and talk. Uh, thank you also to Captain Master for joining us today, uh, to YSD Tantra for organizing uh, this Zoom meeting, which has gone off uh, without any glitches. Normally, I am a participant in many uh, Webex and Zoom meetings and very rarely do they go off so smoothly without glitches. There are always some issues, connectivity issues, something happening, powers going off in between. 
fortunately we had none of these issues and the whole meeting went off smoothly so thanks a lot thank you once again and finally thank you to all the members for joining for sparing your time and joining and making this uh, event uh, go so well and finally uh, to zareen also zareen thank you very much for your kind words they are really very motivating and i this will help us to keep continuing to do and uh, take pune chapter forward and uh, uh do our best to serve the community so thank you once again thank you fellow i think you rightly said the brighter side of the today's meeting is there no glitches were there otherwise in such type of virtual meeting we always care what will happen either the connectivity will go or power will go or the audio will go or something or other you know you you are scared of but luckily today it was 100% success so cheers and big thank to the sd tantra who really helped us a lot in organizing this meeting Yes, Di. Thank you very much. I hope you are there. Welcome, welcome. It was a pleasure to have have you all. And of course, uh, as the Pune chapter chair, chair, I will really like to thank <clears throat> Captain Percy Master for joining from Bombay. Uh, he had actually another meeting to attend, so he has left left us. But anyway, nonetheless, he was also a great help to us. Uh, Chetan, everybody has thanked you a lot. We, I also personally enjoyed your talk. actually earlier also i heard you so i was uh, looking forward to it thank you very much for giving a very amazing and interesting talk and uh, not forgetting our nazneen and umid and all who are there not seen where are you now umid are you there umid nazneen are there left like you know acha okay so that's all i think it brings us to the end of today's uh, agm thank you very much once again and let's hope that the situation improves and we are able to meet physically and do lot lot many activities as we as we have been doing in the past as i said once again i look forward to our both the wings youth and we wing to be very active and also look forward to the new members who join the committee to contribute with their own suggestions with their new ideas so that we can do something better and keep our the flag of our chapter flying high in the chapters thank you one and all so if nothing is there i think we can end the meeting here or if anyone still there is some time if you want four five minutes are there if somebody still want to say anything okay then i think thank you very much thank you chetan yes we can end the meeting Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.